Let us start off by calling the 2015 Chair of the APEC Business Advisory Council, Ms. Doris Magsaysay Ho. Therefore, we believe that having sound, transparent, and predictable legal environment will lead to being the attractive place for investment. The Philippines, for example, under our president, uh, Benigno Aquino, have put great focus on integrity. He calls it the straight path, the straight path. And the Philippines, as a result, over the past six years, is now investment grade, by three, has now by three major rating agencies, and that has helped this economy really become an attractive place for investment. Mm -hmm. According to the OECD, adopting good governance practices in the corporate sector produces great tangible results. And therefore, we are very eager to listen to our guest speaker, Mr. Jesse Stanislao, speak about the public and corporate uh, performance governance system certification that he has been working on, um, and um, also uh, 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 comments from the chairman of the Philippine Stock Exchange on how the corporate sector is welcoming these initiatives. We are so delighted to host this luncheon and to welcome uh, Justice Stanislao, who will brief us on the important work they're doing um, in this in, uh, in this uh, area. Good governance is key for all economies and for big and small businesses alike. And we feel that for small businesses under the inclusive growth agenda, this is even more important because small businesses cannot afford the cost of, uh, of having an environment where one has to overcome the barriers from corruption. So we're really thrilled that we're all here today uh, we started our ABAC one with the senior officials, and we were so thrilled that we're doing so much to deepen the engagements among ourselves, uh, the public and private sector. So we look forward to uh, listening to these, our guest speakers, and we thank you very much for being here. Please enjoy the rest of the program. Um, we'd like to welcome next, um, ladies and gentlemen, under Secretary Laura Del Rosario, the 2015 Chair of the APEC Senior Officials Meeting. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, my some colleagues, and of course our friends from ABEC and the IGG organizers, the Institute for Solidarity in Asia. First of all, I would like to thank ABAC and its chair for 2015, Ms. Doris magsaysay -Ho, for hosting this luncheon in honor of the awardees of the Islands of Good Governance. I would also like to commend the Institute for Solidarity in Asia, its chairman, Emeritus Dr. Jesus Estanislao, and its chairman, Dr. Francisco Duque, 
for carrying on with the initiative and their untiring effort to promote good governance in the public sector. I also, of course, have thanked, I always really, I'm very, really, very appreciative of the support of my colleagues, the APEC senior officials present here for accepting our invitation to join us here today. As I acknowledge the, pres the presence of our Islands of Good Governance awardees who have proven that change is possible and have resolved to better themselves in the service of the people. What really struck me here is that the Islands of Good Governance, the awardees are predominantly from the government sector and I know that's in the past, that's where most of the problems emanated from. So good governance for us in APEC is an issue which is taken very seriously. It is, of course, an underlying, we consider this an underlying factor and fundamental basis for economic policies to be effective. We recognize it as a primary platform for progress and economic development. Governance permeates our work as a necessary element in the implementation of policies on structural and regulatory reform standards and conformance and ease of doing business among others. We hope that this initiative will catch on within the Philippines and be the beginning of a movement towards good governance not only within the economy of the Philippines but also across APEC uh, economies in order to develop what we call a region of good governance in APEC. We hope to see in the future more islands of good governance across the APEC region. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Under Secretary Del Rosario. Clearly, one of our most hardworking senior officials to make sure that APEC is indeed a success. Let's give her another warm round of applause, please. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my pleasure to now welcome the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Philippine Stock Exchange, Mr. Hans Sikat. Uh, Chairman uh, Doris magsaysay Ho, Undersecretary Del Rosario, Dr. Jesse Stanislao, and the ABAC uh, members uh, present. Uh, uh, by the way, good, good afternoon and welcome to Manila. Uh, it's actually an honor to be here uh, in front of you as I represent uh, effectively the private sector and the various stakeholders that make up this economy. Uh, being part of the Philippine Stock Exchange means we're literally in the middle of everyone, in the middle of issuers, in the middle of investors, in the middle of uh, clients of uh, various companies, and also in the middle of uh, our own regulator and, and the government. And I think that uh, for those of us who've been uh, watching financial markets over the past few years, uh, I guess when you go back, uh, even just uh, relatively recently, the great financial crash of 2008-2009, uh, one would have thought you've seen a lot of these, uh, let's call it financial issues, financial scandals, and I guess regulators and uh, corporate governance uh, initiatives being put forth to try and stem the tide of uh, these uh, issues from happening over again. And then of course, uh, we're here in 2015 and uh, we hear about a great, uh, I guess, a German company kind of stumbling in and uh, basically we have this big scandal in respect of uh, effectively, what can you call it, but uh, corporate cheating in terms of uh, how they put this uh, particular, let's call it uh, defeat device in their own product. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, uh, while markets go in cycles, uh, corporate governance uh, issues should also not go in cycles. I, I guess we should be building up on the various examples that we've learned through the years. And uh, it's very interesting uh, to see the advocacy of uh, good corporate governance and of course Dr. Jesse Stanislaw being uh, the primary push uh, and uh, I guess leader for this in this country and also in ASEAN, such that now we have the ASEAN uh, uh, corporate governance scorecard, which I think will be the basis for how companies in the region or these public listed companies in the region are going to be viewed. We think this is a great example of uh, change in the system, as well as a great example of trying to put forth a template that is applicable not just in one particular geography, but across geographies. And we do hope that such an effort, in fact, not only changes the mindsets of 
corporations, but also changes the mindset of regulators as well as investors as they, uh, I guess, perform their task in this uh, ecosystem. It's equally important that uh, this effort uh, is now gaining, I would say, gaining traction because here we are in the figurative eve of ASEAN economic integration, which I guess for those of us in the ASEAN region think it's a very important as well as a milestone change for our own economies. So I guess with that, uh, I would just like to close by saying that we're very supportive of the efforts of improving corporate governance, not just in the country, but in the region. And we do hope that the leadership that uh, Dr. Jess Sanislao and his team, I guess, are, are, are pushing is a template that we all can benefit from. So thank you and good afternoon. Thank you for that, Mr. Sikat. Um, here to present that template is our guest speaker. Kindly welcome um, Dr. Jesus Estanislao, who will speak on behalf of the Institute for Solidarity in Asia. And he's the founder and chairman emeritus, whom some of you might also remember as a country's representative to the inaugural APEC Summit in Australia in 1989. Dr. Stanislao. The chair and delegates of the APEC senior officials meeting, the chair and members of the APEC Business Advisory Council, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the privilege and opportunity to present to you the ongoing advocacy against corruption that civil society, business, and government have been undertaking together for several years now in the Philippines. Only deference to age is making me the speaker this afternoon. <laughs> because actually I speak in behalf of two governance advocacies. The Institute of Corporate Directors, whose chairman is here, Francis Estrada. Francis, can you please stand up? and our Public Governance Advocacy Institute, the Institute for Solidarity in Asia, whose chairman is here, Dr. Francisco Duque. As you can see, I'm much older than they. We are pleased to showcase actual examples of transformation in our public sector. Corruption, as you know and have been discussing in APEC, is evil. It weakens, it kills, and it leaves many millions of people in poverty. Moreover, it undermines faith and trust in government. Therefore, it needs to be fought relentlessly and successfully. The fight against corruption, however, cannot be a mere flash in the pan. It has to be systemic, strategic, and sustained. And this is how we have come to pursue our good governance advocacy in both the private and public sectors together. We have found that good governance is the other side of the same coin as the fight against corruption. Moreover, good governance sounds much better, more positive. It also builds rather than merely destroys. It also cleans up and restores trust rather than merely removes dirt and the sources of dismay. It also strengthens and secures the continuity of regimes that tread on the right path, rather than merely disempowers those marked by graft and corruption. 
Our good governance advocacy started with business, our Institute of Corporate Directors. We worked with our private sector to embrace the principles and practices suggested by the OECD and now also by the G20. In particular, we worked with our publicly listed corporations to abide by the best practices espoused by ASEAN and who have been very active in the ASEAN Corporate Governance Scorecard. And tomorrow, we'll be releasing for the first time the results of that initiative where we will be naming the top 50 corporations in ASEAN based on their compliance with corporate governance rules, practices, and principles as espoused by OECD. And I'm particularly pleased to show that 11 of the 50 top scoring ASEAN publicly listed corporations are Philippine corporations. Believe you me, it's not only fun doing business in the Philippines. We also take our corporate governance rather seriously. And may I add that four of those 11 Philippine corporations are under the leadership of one of your ABAC members from the Philippines, Jaime Augusto Sodal de Ayala. However, it takes two to do the, co the go governance tango. We therefore had to extend our advocacy to the public sector as well. Some people have been asking me, how long have you been in this game? I said, not quite since I was born, but maybe about 15 years ago as a result of the East Asian financial crisis. And we started with corporate governance. But within one year, we were told by everybody in this country, you cannot go far with corporate governance unless you do something about public governance as well. So for a public sector, good governance means they're having to think long-term and strategic. They had to craft a shared vision, further specified by a transformation roadmap. It also means they're having to act systemic and on a sustained basis and pursuit of the transformation roadmap has to be a shared responsibility on the part of everyone in the public sector enterprise. And I may add, if you're a public sector, you cannot go very far without the participation involvement of business and civil society. This means having to cascade and win buy-in from everyone, virtually everyone working within the enterprise. It also means continuing monitoring of everyone's performance. It means rewarding above target performance. And above all, it demands that you stay the course until breakthrough transformative results are actually delivered. This is how we have adapted the balanced scorecard into Philippine public sector institutions. We have called it the performance governance system. It is, after all, about good governance that is systemic and sustained so as to deliver transformative performance. We apply the performance governance system from one city to another. We did not quite start from the top and mandated everything down. We started from the bottom. Now we have five Philippine cities that can be shown as examples for other Philippine cities to emulate. There are our first city islands of good governance. One is from this island, Luzon, the city of Balanga, represented by the Vice Mayor, the Honorable Noel Joseph Valicanas. <laughs> Two are from the central part of our country, the Visayas. The city of Bandawe and Cebu, represented by the city administrator, Attorney James Abadia. And the city of Talisay in Negros Occidental, represented by the city mayor, the Honorable Eric Saratan. 
And believe you me, we have two cities coming from our southernmost big island of Mindanao. The city of Butuan, represented by the city mayor, the Honorable Ferdinand Amante. He has planted seven million trees in a period of three years, all geotagged. And finally, the city of Dipolog, represented by the city mayor, the Honorable Evelyn Uy. They're here to be recognized. Their stories of transformation are available for our cities, other cities, to look at and possibly learn from. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We have also gone from one national government agency to another. Now we have five Philippine national government agencies that we can hold up as examples for other national government agencies, NGAs, to emulate. They are our first NGA islands of good governance. The first is our Philippine Heart Center under our Department of Health, represented by Dr. Maria Linda Buhat. The second is our entire Department of Trade and Industry, represented by its Undersecretary, the Honorable Nora Terrado. Now the third to fifth agencies are under our Department of National Defense. There are Armed Forces of the Philippines, represented by no less than the Chief of Staff, General Hernando Eriberi. The Philippine Army, represented by the Commanding General, Lieutenant General Eduardo Año. And the Philippine Navy, represented by the Chief of Naval Staff, Rear Admiral Bayani Gairlan. They have earned enough battle scars from the fight to transform themselves through good governance. And they are admired by our general public. Based on the surveys, they are one of the most popular government agencies in the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We have also worked hard to transform our state enterprise state-owned enterprise sector. We call those belonging to the sector as government-owned and controlled corporations, or GOCCs. The first national law passed under the current administration was the Governance Act of 2011 for our state-owned enterprises, or GOCCs. We are proud to present the first mature fruit of that law, the first GOCC Island of Good Governance. This is our National Electrification Administration, represented by the administrator, the Honorable Edita Bueno. <laughs> Regulators have great exemplary and beneficial influence upon the sectors they oversee and regulate. It is for this reason that we are especially proud to present the first island of good governance from our regulatory sector. And this is our Banco Central ng Pilipinas, our Central Monetary Authority, <laughs> represented by the Deputy Governor, the Honorable Vicente Aquino. Our Central Bank has embedded good governance practices into its system. Thank you very much. Now that we have these 12 Philippine public sector institutions as islands of good governance, we set them up as beacons for anti-corruption and good governance. This demands that they should continue to give good example 
and inspiration to all our public sector institutions. They need to be recertified every three years for their observance of the code of ethics and integrity, their practice of solidarity and promotion of entrepreneurship in social enterprises for inclusive growth, and their governance outreach proving that social responsibility has been embedded in their transformation program. Even as they share good governance practices with one another, we implore our Philippine public sector institutions to learn from the best anti-corruption and good governance practices from the entire APEC community as well. In doing so, we will one day be able to realize our shared dream. The next time APEC shall meet here in these islands, hopefully 18, 20 years from now, our country, the Philippines, will no longer be just mere islands of good governance. We shall have become an archipelago of good governance. Thank you for your patience and attention. Have a good afternoon. For me, governance is an opportunity to lead. Will, having the, the heart to understand also the current situation of your constituents. Ang, ang pinakaunang word na pumasok sa akin is guide para magbago. You cannot do it alone. You have to have uh, a team. You have to involve a lot of people. To me, well, there has to be involvement from uh, from top to bottom to the last member. When you see the result, I'm sure the people would want it to continue. and efficient with the least cost and most especially it gives a satisfaction and a good outcome for me that is satisfaction and a good outcome for me that is Versus good governance. Exactly. <laughs> Again, we would like to thank uh, Dr. Jesse Stanislao. Uh, before uh, good governance became a buzzword or an operative word, Secretary Jess, as we fondly call him, was already in the forefront. He is indeed an icon of good governance, and I think he deserves another warm round of applause. And uh, Ladies and gentlemen, to formally close uh, this program and give his thoughts on our first Philippine Models of Transformation, I would like to call on the chairman of the ABAC Connectivity Working Group, Mr. Anthony Nightingale.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will all agree with me that we've had a very interesting and impressive presentation today. Sincere thanks to Jess Stanislaw for his very valuable work on this initiative and for his excellent comments. His passion for the cause of good governance is very clear for us all to see. I'd also like to add my congratulations to all those on the table on the left there from many different government departments for their achievements that have been recognized today. Congratulations to you. Thanks also to Hans for his very valuable comments on the stock exchange and listed companies. It's very good to see the achievements of the Philippines in this field, to go alongside impressive economic growth, good progress in many development, social development programs, and Laura in its excellent leadership of APEC this year. Maybe that's worth a round of applause. <laughs> Clean and efficient government at all levels is a great, facilitator, a great facilitator for business and an important uh, contributor to economic performance. But we realize, of course, that the corporate sector also has a very important and critical role to play in developing and implementing its own codes of conduct, rigorous codes of conduct. After all, if we think about it, any serious corruption in the public sector nearly always has a counterparty in the private sector. So what is one of the many impressive things about the initiative that we've just heard about, the IGG initiative, is that it gathers together all segments of Philippine society. It gathers together the corporate society. It gathers together uh, the public sector, and indeed mobilizes ordinary citizens. This Islands of Good Governance project is making a huge contribution to also one of uh, ABAC's uh, important um, initiatives this year. Doris referred to it right at the beginning of this program, which is the rule of law. We have realized that the rule of law, transparent, open government, honest business, honest government is hugely important to economic performance throughout our region, which is why we've adopted the initiative. It's actually sponsored by Peru, so I'm sure it will still be a, an important activity <clears throat> Excuse me, next year. It was good to hear that this initiative has now an ASEAN dimension also. And I'd like to think, Alan, that we could um, incorporate some of these ideas into our APEC work plan as well. Thank you again, Jess, for sharing with us this um, very important project. And good luck in taking it further into the future. Thank you all very much. Thank you for that, Mr. Nightingale. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. We now invite you to watch the symbolic beginning of new partnerships towards good governance and anti-corruption as we call on stage the official photo opportunity for the representatives of the 12 islands of good governance institutions. Um, ISA Chair Emeritus, Dr. Jesus P. Stanislao. We'd like to call on ABAC Chair, Ms. Doris magsaysay -Ho. APEC SOM Chair, Undersecretary Laura Del Rosario. We'd also like to call Mr. Tan Wan, Jian of China, previous host and chair of APEC, and Mr. Raul Salazar Cosio, the next host and chair of Peru, as well as Mr. Tony Tan Katkyong, who is um, an ABAC member, ABAC Philippines member.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'd like to thank um, ABAC senior officials and um, some officials as well. And Dr. Stanislaw from the ISA, thank you so much for being here with us today. And enjoy the rest of your afternoon and APEC week. <laughs>